वेलकम डियर फ्रेंड्स टू माय चैनल जियो टेक्निकल इंजीनियरिंग कंसल्टेंसी टिप्स दिस लेक्चर ऑफ माइन इज बीइंग नंबर्ड एज लेक्चर 18 ऑल ऑफ दिस इज द 21st इन द सीरीज टुडे इन दिस लेक्चर ऑफ माइन आई जस्ट डिसाइडेड टू गिव यू ऑल द ग्लिम्स ऑफ द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ फाइल फाउंडेशंस बेस्ड ऑन डिफरेंट क्राइटेरिया now what are the different criteria and how the file foundations are being named because of those criteria will be discussed in this lecture of mine now there are six points the number one point is the material of construction that is of which material the file is being constructed if it is wooden pile it will be termed as timber pile if you are using steel box or pipes it will be termed as steel pile if you are using concrete it will be known as concrete pile and if you are using steel and concrete both it will be termed as composite pile now based on the method and mode of load transfer we all know that any pile when constructed certain component of the load bearing capacity of the pile comes from the end bearing and some part from friction but it may be the case that in any particular pile it is end bearing pile that is whole of this bearing component is coming from the toe of the pile friction pile that is the the pile load is being totally governed by the friction that is the surrounding friction of the soil all around the concrete then it is termed as friction pile if it is being used as tension pile it is termed as tension pile if it is being used as laterally loaded pile for the case of say valves in shore shores and if it is being used as battered lateral piles then it is being termed as laterally loaded piles that is how the load is being transferred for the structural behavior and load compliance being required for that very particular respective structure that is why these terms are being defined now the method of installation the pipe may be driven pipe bolt pipe or vibrated pipe or jetted pipe etc and many so you can name your pipe by the method of installation also as well now the method of forming method of forming means whether the concrete which you are using at the site is pre cast or pre stressed or cast in situ driven and cast in phase or bolt cast in situ now this is the fourth method of as to how you can classify the piles now the fifth method is the cross section of the pile generally we all people know you believe that the pile is generally circular but in some cases pile can be square pile can be rectangular in shape pile can be hexagonal in shape and when i refer to these terms as i section x section box or pipe it refers to the steel piles now depending upon the shape of the pile you can also define it as cylindrical or circular pile under rim pile where we construct under rim bulbs which i have already discussed with you people in my previous lectures referring to black cotton soil and one of my just covered previous lectures and some of some more of these lectures also in previous day your pile may be tapered your pile may be battered that is it is being cast in situ at a certain angle to the horizontal this is the ground level this is the angle of the pipe certain angle pipe you can say so there are conditions when we need as per the requisition at the site to give to provide the better pile there and hence for there are other piles also depending upon the shape of the pile 
Now, if I wish to conclude whole of these different kind of files based on the on the classification, depending upon the different criteria, you can define the files as displacement files and non-displacement files in two broader concepts. Now, what is actually displacement files? When the files are being driven into the soil and what happens? The surrounding soil is being displaced volumetrically in a lateral direction or by way of heaving upwards. Say you are constructing the pipe, driving in the pipe, this heave occurs and this lateral, laterally it displaces the soil and what happens is actually these kind of piles are being referred for ground improvement uh, implementations at some requisite sites. What happens? When we cast these piles, the surrounding soil is also being compacted. That is, in turn, the shear strength of the whole of the soil increases with the help of these displacement piles being built in there at the site. That is, it densifies the surroundings also. And although this can be constructed in both sandy soils and clay soils, they are more effective in sandy soils because in clay soils. Some of the cons of these sites come into picture which I can, which I will discuss in some of my future lectures. Basically, rather to say conclusively, if these kinds of piles are more effective in sandy soils, while these are not effective in clay soils. Now, what are the non-displacement piles? Non-displacement piles are those kind of piles which are being generally cast in situ at the site, in which case no displacement of soil occurs. What we do is, from ground level, we do a boring, a borehole is being bored, we put out the soil excavated from this borehole and then fill in this with concrete and reinforcement etc. as per the design load requirements. This is the two of the pipe. Now, these kind of piles can be supported or unsupported, supported by way of casing or unsupported by way of using the bentonite in order to avoid the side slippage of the falling of the soil while casting these piles. In detail, I may be covering this displacement piles and their types, non-displacement piles and their types in one of my future lectures. But in order to give you a glimpse of what is basically a displacement pile, these can be driven precast or timber piles etc. And non-displacement piles can be board cast in situ piles or under piles. So, I think friends, ki I decided to cover this topic. Why? Because just to let you know all about the different kind of piles being discussed and being used worldwide. I hope you would have understood and come to know about these different kind of files in a much better way. I request you all to keep on watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. Thank you dear friends. Thank you very much.